No, this is not her first grade. Monster. You're witnessing an attic in action. <laughs> so one of the things I want to talk about today is my ongoing addiction to flour and sugar. Well, one of the best things about living on a boat is it really gives me time to take a good look at why it is that I do things, how I do them. I'm just able to slow down enough and really ask those questions and take a, a good look at it. Once again, I am letting go of flour and sugar. I love you, flour and sugar. Look at this. Flour and sugar, I love you. <laughs> look at these teeth. Now let's have a follow-up video to the original video. Flour and sugar, I'm so glad you came back to me. <laughs> After I did that horrible video to you. <laughs> My aunt told me once that sugar and flour are only one molecule off from alcohol. And that pretty much sums it up for me when I think about my addiction to it, my cravings for it. Like one cookie is great and three would be better. So I think there's really something there to look at um, in terms of the addictive qualities of these chemicals. Since I've already shared what it was like for me drinking alcohol is that I just wanted more and more and more and more. So the same thing is happening with me over and over with flour and sugar. And I have gone through periods starting with when, when I quit drinking, which was 12 years ago this month. Um, after a year, I realized, wow, I got rid of the alcohol, but I've really increased my pizza, ice cream, cake, sandwiches, that kind of thing. And I think I'd even gained weight after that first year. So that was my first uh, indication that I was, okay, I think I pretty much replaced that uh, alcohol addiction with sugar. And I think that's pretty common for people who quit drinking. So I did something radical because someone in my family was um, had gone through a transformation using Food Anonymous, which is a 12-step. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll check that out. I stopped eating flour and sugar completely. I dropped at least 22 pounds pretty quickly and effortlessly without any exercise, really. So the results was like, wow, this is impressive. I've never seen anything like this kind of uh, a result, and my energy was better, and I was feeling really good about myself. So, and I did for many years. And I would have a little bit of popcorn, or, you know, I'd have... I'd variate a little bit, but by and large, I was pretty strict. The last, say, five years, I would say, five, six years, I started to allow more and more flour and sugar into my diet, thinking, I've got this, you know, I can do moderation, and no big deal. So I have definitely gained probably 20 pounds back over that 10 years. And I'm definitely feeling like, hey, I'm, I'm not as energetic and just clear-minded and you know even keeled like I used to be and why is that? Flour and sugar. Remember that video I did? Speak what to, was I thinking? Speak to your cookie. Tell them, tell them how you really feel. I mean I love you. <laughs> I don't care if you're killing me. Killing me softly. <laughs> Cookies! Because one of the things on a boat is that I am bringing everything on board, all of the ingredients to make whatever we're going to eat, 99.9% .9 of the meals. So I know in the back of my head when I buy bags of flour and bags of sugar that this is a conflict down deep because I want to do moderation, but I, I know my tendency and as I've seen with yet another cruising season, you know, my, I make really good pizzas and corn tortillas and pancakes and cookies and there's always an opportunity and a desire to have a reward and a treat. So I am back to a place where I don't want to be all or nothing like I am with alcohol and that's for obvious reasons. I mean, there's just too many great things out there to eat. But I am at a place where I am taking full responsibility for what I bring on board because if it's not on board there is there's no negotiation it's easy you know and right now I'm out of flour I'm, I have a tiny bit of brown sugar but the bottom line is I'm kind of starting fresh again so we are out of fresh groceries so it's been only six days since we went to Green Turtle 
But Nick says we have a ton of food on board. Now, if you looked underneath this cushion, where we've got plenty of food stored, and you went down into our pantry, there's no way you could say that we're out of food. You could feed a family of four for weeks with what we've got in terms of uh, peanut butter and pasta. So you're saying we shouldn't even go to the grocery store. We should eat everything we have on board before we replenish. So this is the last of the fresh stuff. And I'm gonna make a little stir fry. This is coming together nicely. We've got a peanut sauce and some chicken. What do you think? Nature's uh, brew? I'm excited. All right, there's the finished product on a bed of lentils. This is really good. For not having anything to eat on board, you really pulled this one out of your hat. I'm excited to go to Marsh Harbor where there's a real grocery store and I can stock up on all things healthy. Ah, I can smell trees. That's one thing out here, you don't smell too much. It's just so, I guess, uh, it's just so clean. <laughs> It's a long walk to the grocery store. It's not too hot though. Oh, I thought of something else I wanted to share. And that is how I think everybody should have a YouTube channel. Because having to put yourself out there in front of a camera, I mean, first of all, it looks silly. I'm walking down the street holding this camera, looking at myself and there's cars coming by. But this is the world we live in. And to not be afraid of this feels really good. Plus, really makes you think about what it is you want to say. Makes you think about how it is that you look. So it's harder to hide and get stuck and live under a rock when you have a YouTube channel. And that feels good. Feels good to share. Feels good to just shine. Let people know who you are. Maybe inspire some people. You see this? This is really heavy. <laughs> this is where I stop and take a little break. So this is what $240, $45 will get you in the Abacos. Some really good stuff, organic veggies. And I did get some pea protein. We are out of protein powder, nice good eggs. Lots of carrots, so this I figure will be good for our upcoming passage. So I think we're good to go for at least two or three weeks. Mm. You think this is going to last two or three weeks? Well, with the other stuff we just got to. Uh -huh. Yeah. I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey and say that I know there are tons of people, millions of people who are struggling with their diets. I was listening to a podcast the other day and they said that sugar is in now 80% of all food. So you have to be really intentional and eat whole foods and you know make your own food if you want to keep sugar at a minimum in your diet. Well, I mastered the alcohol one. I have not mastered this, but I really, really want to because I want to live as long and healthy and energetic as possible. What else would give me a very satisfying feeling? Maybe it's not just food, you know, or I mean, there's so many great alternatives and I just need to remember to choose it. And so part of what I'm using here is my YouTube channel to clarify this for myself, help solidify it for myself, and then hopefully inspire anybody else out there who's trying to look at this themselves as well and begin again. That's the beauty is that we can always start over and just not beat ourselves up. That's the number one thing. Do not beat yourself up. And I believe that I can do some moderation around this. And I'm very fortunate in looking at being on a boat as a great opportunity to really just take away the temptations. Because I know how hard it is when I'm on land and there's so many great restaurants and so many great treats at the grocery store. And it's challenging to say no to that and not fall for those cravings. So. One thing I wanted to show you is a really great chocolate that I learned how to make and I am using a little bit of maple syrup so I'm not going crazy. This is an example of moderation but the main ingredients are just coconut oil, peanut butter, stevia, uh, vanilla and then just a little tablespoon of uh, maple syrup. You should try it because it is really good. 
Okay, so I just added a half a cup of coconut oil and peanut butter to this pan. And I just have it on medium. And I'm just gonna mix these together. And then add some cocoa powder. And then remove it from the heat before I add the rest of the stuff. All right, this is three heaping tablespoons of cocoa powder. And that doesn't have any sugar in it. And I'm just gonna mix this in really good. Okay, so I just poured the chocolate into this silicone mold that's for ice cubes. And it works really good for popping these chocolates out once they're frozen. And I'm gonna add some just coconut, unsweetened, gluten-free coconut uh, flakes to the chocolate. Test that out, see if that's good. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna do more of that really helps me feel just more hydrated and cleansed and good is drinking a little bit of apple cider vinegar in water. So I just did one full glass of that with like a, I don't know, a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar. Try to do that at least once a day. So that one's done. And just in general, I'm just trying to drink more water. That was another thing I noticed kind of slipped when I was eating all those carbs. So more water and apple cider vinegar. Choke it down. It helps. So I wanted to share this little mixture of nuts and seeds that I've discovered. These are pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and pecans. And what I do is toast them up with a little bit of salt. Just takes a few minutes and then I just have this little snack that is really filling, really healthy. And I luckily brought a ton of these pumpkin seeds. So I um, have walnuts and a little more pecan after this. So anyway, a combination like that is really good. I just remembered that I have cottage cheese. So I'm trying this little concoction out. I think it's gonna be good. Oh, that's really good. Highly recommend. Okay, I wanna show you another little treat that I like. It's basically unsweetened almond milk and chia seeds, and then I can add stevia and cinnamon. So it's just one cup of almond milk. So I'm gonna pour that into here. <laughs> Made a little mess. And then it's three tablespoons of chia seeds. All right, then I just shake it up. So it's best after a day in the overnight in the refrigerator. So I'm just gonna put that in the fridge and that'll be a nice little snack. 